Hey, Mark from Sound Matters here, and welcome to our new series, a classic album series. The first album we take a look at is The Doors' debut album. So yeah, it's a brand new series and we've got some fantastic classic albums lined up for you. Really going to delve into each one, really think about what makes them timeless, what makes them great, why do people still love them so much to this day, and what is that secret sauce that makes an album classic? What elevates it to that status? Today we do The Doors and I'd like to thank VMP for sending this particular pressing of this album so this is actually the vmp essentials release for june from vmp it's fantastic pressing of it it's a mono um it's a mono cut record and it's on colored vinyl and you also get this really cool bonus light my fire single as well which is on clear vinyl so definitely check that out go to the vmp website um, in the link in the description below to check out this particular exclusive pressing from vmp so with that said Without further ado, we'll go straight into this review of such a timeless classic album that is The Doors' debut. The Doors' debut album is a true classic that pushed boundaries, opened minds, and explored universal topics of self-exploration that make it as relevant today as the day it was released. To say The Doors is a classic album would be a severe understatement. Iconic and era-defining are better words to describe an album at the centre of America's counterculture. When an album is regarded as classic, it is perfect in every way. And by that, I mean they take on a life of their own and you wouldn't want to change a thing. There's a kind of magic and alchemy that takes place in the studio. It's difficult to put your finger on it, but it's the secret ingredient that makes an album stand out. You can't manufacture it, you can't plan for it, it just unfolds as the stars align and everything comes together. The Doors debut album is one of these perfect moments, a timeless collection of songs you can pass down from generation to generation and they still remain relevant. The Doors came to be after a chance meeting between Jim Morrison and Ray Manzurek on Venice Beach in July 1965. The pair were both attending UCLA School for Theatre, Film and Television at the time. Morrison told Manzurek he'd been writing some songs and Manzurek asked to hear some of them. As more of a poet, Morrison didn't fancy himself as much of a singer, but by reminding him of the success of Bob Dylan, Manzurek was able to convince Morrison to rendition some of his work. As a superb keyboard player and musician overall, Manzurek was in a band called Rick and the Ravens and was eventually joined by drummer John Densmore. The band was now called The Doors and would hook up with guitar player Robbie Krieger to complete the band later in 1965. The band has great aspirations to play the famous Whiskey A Go Go on Hollywood Sunset Boulevard. Anyone coming to LA would want to play the Whiskey. So as a stopgap, they took up residency at a much sleazier venue a few doors down called London Fog. The hope was that news would eventually reach the Whiskey of a great band playing a few doors down, leading to an opportunity to play. And sure enough, it worked. Playing as the Whiskey House Band, the Doors were discovered by Elektra Records in August 1966. This led to them signing with Elektra and developing partnerships with producer Paul Rothschild and sound engineer Bruce Botnick, who worked on this album. Every outstanding debut album has to have a stellar opening track, and they don't get much more impelling than break on through to the other side. For a guy who didn't think himself much of a singer, Morrison's voice is impressive, the star of the show. His performance is expressive, powerful and raw with emotion. Morrison is a natural poet and an honest performer, able to channel the influence of Frank Sinatra in the verse and then tear his voice apart for the chorus. The Doors came from a diverse musical background spanning jazz, rock, blues and folk, much of which is referenced throughout the entire album. Break On Through has a driving energy based on its Latin beat, which is tightened up for rock and roll of course, but it's a Latin beat at the core. Manzurek and Krieger applied their jazz and blues influences respectively to the beat, with Manzurek openly stating he borrowed elements from Ray Charles for the organ parts. Equally, Krieger references the blues standard Shake Your Moneymaker in the guitar riff. To me, all the great musicians know how to reference their influences, package it up and create something special. The Doors were experts in that respect. 
Another great example of this kind of referencing is the track Soul Kitchen, where Krieger gets some funk elements in there. So the smooth guitar riff is dripping with classic James Brown horn section vibes, so it's safe to say there was a lot more to the Doors than just straight up rock and roll. The Doors didn't have a bass player as such, and while the studio recording does feature Larry Nectal on bass to make sure there's enough bottom end for the recording, Manzurik's left hand driving the Fender Rhodes bass keyboard was the true bass player of The Doors. You can hear this most clearly on Soul Kitchen. It's a real testament to the skill of the band that so many styles come together across the album under a single context. This isn't easy to achieve. An Alabama song is perhaps the most extreme example of this. The song is actually taken from a German opera called The Rise and Fall of the City of Mahogany. How the Doors managed to make German umpa music work within the context of a classic rock record, I'll never know, but work it does. One thing that's very evident when you listen to this album is there's very little in the way of overdubs. The Doors' debut album is almost a live album, as they would have been on stage at the Whiskey, only it's captured in a recording studio. You get that great sense of the band's often erratic and improvised performances, particularly from Morrison's vocal. He had a great ability to improvise around the band, often going in a totally different direction to the song, while still allowing the band to pull things back. Perhaps the best example of this is the track Backdoor Man, which carries all the smoky vibes of a grungy blues club. Morrison would famously lose himself in the performances, the band wouldn't quite know where he was going to take things on any given night, and this was all part of the genius and the charm really. The song that really took the doors into the stratosphere, of course, is the hit single Light My Fire. Morrison was the poet and lyricist of that band for sure, but he had asked the other members to contribute as they needed more songs. Starting out as a folk love song on Krieger's acoustic guitar, the band extrapolated the core of what was clearly going to be a hit record. The vibe was transformed entirely by Densmore's Latin beat, and Morrison wrote the words to the second chorus, famously countering the love narrative with death citing love that had become a funeral pyre. Complete with its kaleidoscope 60s organ intro, the song was a hit. The only problem? It was over seven minutes long and had to be cut down for the single release. In the end, the band managed a six minute 30 single edit, which is the single release most people know today. In retrospect, the track is seen by many as the perfect soundtrack to the summer of 1967, as things were heating up in America in terms of the social and political changes of the late 1960s. Far from a head in the sand flower power band, the Doors weren't afraid to explore the darker side of reality and personal reflection. Undoubtedly, psychedelics played a part, and you can hear the personal indulgences and sense of reflection and discovery in Morrison's poetic lyrics. Take the words on End of the Night, for example. Sang to the backdrop of music conjuring up feelings of wandering in an exotic desert, the words are dark and deeply personal. Morrison would famously push every boundary he could as far as he could. And he sings... Realms of bliss, realms of light, some are born to sweet delight, some are born to endless night, end of the night, end of the night. With a brief interlude from the Marishi Meditation inspired track called Take It As It Comes, the end of the night eventually becomes the end itself, as the album concludes with the Eastern flavoured epic track, The End. The lyrics, dark and foreboding, the music, enchanting, mysterious and spellbinding. The organ provides a droning backdrop, allowing Morrison to lay bare his lyrical prowess while Krieger's guitar interjects with exotic-sounding sitar emulations. What's the most poignant lyric in this track? Well, lost in a Roman wilderness of pain, and all the children are insane. If ever there was a lyric for the generational disconnect of the late 1960s, this could be the one. The Doors' debut album is near perfect from start to finish. Morrison took his audience on a journey of self-discovery that endeared him to a generation. At the same time, the issues and themes he wrote about are timeless, to the point where each succeeding generation can take the same journey. Most classic albums have a good grounding in music history, but simultaneously take genres and styles in new directions. They help to build the ever-growing fabric and rich tapestry of music history. Albums like this have the magic. Nobody owns it, they take on a life of their own, carrying on indefinitely with each generation that passes, so long as they remain relevant. Somewhere out there is Jim Morrison, still pushing the boundaries until the end of the night. So that concludes the first of the classic album series from Sound Matters. We hope this sheds some new light on a classic album for you, and we hope you'll go and rediscover, or you know, discover perhaps even for the first time, this absolutely, truly 
deserving of the title classic album. So thanks again to VMP for making this first series possible. Thank you so much for sending that. And um, yeah, do check out the pressing from VMP. They do some absolutely stellar re-releases of so many classic great albums. So go check them out in the description below. If you like the t-shirt I'm wearing, head over to the, the other link in the description below, which is our merch store. So check out some of the stuff that we do there. And like, comment and subscribe on this video if you're new here. And we will see you in the next video. Cheers. Keep spinning, guys. Thank you.